to seek the Lord in prayer. Our kind and our gracious Father, God, the creator of the heavens, the creator of the earth, we would like to thank you for allowing us to be in your presence this morning. Lord, we know that it is a privilege to be here to worship and to praise your name. Father God in heaven, we'd like to pray at this time for those of our members that could not be here with us. We think of Sister Vera, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord, for touching her and making her whole again, Father. Lord, we pray that where she is right now, Lord, you are with her, Father God, and that she too is enjoying this Sabbath day. Lord, we pray for the other many members, Lord, that are not well at this time. We think of Sister Miranda, who hasn't been coming to church, Lord. There are many other saints, Lord, who have not been making it to the services. Lord, we pray that wherever they are, Lord, you are still with them, Lord. That you may continue to speak to them, that they may be here, Lord, and that they may have that desire to continue to want to worship you. Father in heaven, we'd like to pray for our children in our midst. Lord, we know that it is not easy living in this world that we are in. For we know, Lord, that the devil is trying to get them at every angle. But Lord, we pray that as the parents teach these children in their homes, as they go to schools, Lord, that your angels may be there to protect them. Lord, we know that Without these children, Lord, we have no future. We pray asking you to continue to guide them, Lord, that they may make the right decisions and that we may not be slack in guiding these children. Father in heaven, we like to pray for the world at large. We think of the people who suffered in Boston, Lord. Lord, we can see the signs of the times unfolding right before us. Lord, we can see that the devil himself is not slack, Lord, but he is working extra hard in these last days. But Father God, may we be vigilant. May we be strong, Lord. May we be able to support and tell the world that there is a solution to all these problems. And that solution is Jesus Christ. We stand before you, Lord, asking you to forgive us our sins. For Lord, we know that we are not perfect. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. At this time, Lord, we'd like to present the speaker. We pray, Lord, that the words that may come out of the mouth may touch somebody today. Lord. Somebody watching this program. Somebody in this church. Lord, may we be able to be transformed and renewed. For we know we are living in the last days. We thank you so much for your love and your kindness. With Jesus Christ, wonderful and merciful name. Let the church say. We'd like to thank Brother Shigai Pua for that beautiful story. I think next time you should get, give us a warning so we could bring some Kleenex. <laughs> we shall now have our scripture reading and that comes from the book of Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 and 14. The book of Philippians chapter 3 reading from verse 13. And verse 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark 
for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. May the Lord bless his friend.
brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Are you determined to forget the past? Have you asked God to give you that victory? I know many of us don't fully understand what that means. <coughs> One may wonder, how can I forget something that has happened to me? But one definition for the word forget is to disregard intentionally or to overlook. In other words, you have to choose to disregard your past so that it doesn't keep you from moving forward. That means good and bad. Sometimes our past victories keep us from rising higher as much as our past failures, yeah? If we don't let go of the old, we won't be able to embrace the new. Jesus, confirm their choices by obeying his commands to be baptized, it's only because of the limitations of our human condition <clears throat> that we cannot hear the songs of joy expressed by the host of us. When Jesus washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will after this. And that is in John chapter 13 and verse 7. I believe the scripture today. I believe it has meaning to the things that he brings into our life including the desire to follow him when we make the choice to get baptized, or when we make the choice to follow him as our personal savior. Jesus speaks to our hearts through his spirit and leads us to an understanding of the principles of his kingdom and what lies ahead. There is so much more he has to share with us, both in this life and in the life to come. Today we may not be able to, complete, to comprehend completely the significance of what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. We have such limited perspective on the privilege of being a part of the family of heaven that 
what it means and what it means to be a Christian. In our daily lives, we choose to tell our friends or our acquaintances what it means to be a Christian. Until we have experienced what it means to be a Christian, we cannot truly express that to our friends, our co-workers, our children, our partners, or whomever we come into in contact with. <coughs> because we limit ourselves, we limit our, we limit God to what we can comprehend. When the skies is rolled back and our eyes see the king in his beauty, we'll begin to fathom more of what this is about. Let's use our imagination. What, when you meet your tall and magnificent angel, who has been your unforeseen guardian throughout your lifetime, when you hear the Lord say, come and inherit the kingdom, prepare for you. When you walk through those gigantic gates made of solid pearls, when you meet and embrace those whom you've known, those whom you've heard of, then it will begin to sink in and your joys will grow and know no limit. The awesome significance of what it means to make a decision for Jesus, to declare to the world that you have accepted his salvation and his plan for your life is something that will continue to develop through eternity. In heaven and in the earth made new. We'll, we'll reflect on the stages of our life and glory in the miracle of how he reached out and touched us. How he patiently guided us. How he continuously protects us and leads us into deeper understanding of his will. Some of these things we know about today. But for everything that we know, there will be a thousand that will be revealed to us later. There will be thousands more. We will not be able to restrain our lips from shouting glory to God as we learn more and more of the operations of his kindly grace in our lives. We serve a supernatural God. He is not limited by anything or anyone. He's ready to do the impossible in you, for you, and through you. Think about this for a moment. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Spirit of God actually <coughs> makes his home in you. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead as in Romans chapter 8 and verse 11, that means you have unlimited power, unlimited wisdom, unlimited ability, unlimited joy, unlimited peace inside of you by the power of the Holy Ghost. As a believer, you have the unlimited supernatural living God inside of you. Let that sink down into your heart. Let it restore confidence and strength to your being. Let it energize your thoughts and attitudes today. As you meditate on him <coughs> and the vastness of his power inside of you, you will tap into the power more and more. Every day you will experience his supernatural increase as you put him first, the supernatural one living in you. As when Jesus was on earth, 
one of the parables, he met the rich young ruler. And in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, he says, But he seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. With the rich young ruler, in Mark chapter 10, sorry, verse 21. When Jesus had tell him all the things that he needed to do, you know, he was proud to say, all these things I've been doing since I was a child. So, you know, tell me something new that I haven't done. I've been to Sabbath school, I've returned my tithe, Offering, I've volunteered, I've helped the sick, I haven't lied, I haven't committed, committed my neighbor. What's new? What is there for me to do? But in Mark chapter 10, 21, it says, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and take and come, take up the cross, and follow me. I'm sure, as the Bible further explained, he wasn't too happy to hear that. He was a little bit annoyed that he will now become poor, said all that I have and give it away. Jesus is telling us today, how can we use the story of the rich young ruler to apply to our life today. Does it mean, okay, cut your hours at work and find some time to do some voluntary work or spend time to do the work of God? Does it mean whatever God has blessed us with, it is important that we share it with others because we may be our neighbor's answer prayer because they may be hungry and need to be fed, that they may be naked and need to be clothed? Does it mean that we need to start be our neighbor's Bible? Where, I remember as a child growing up, there was this poem that says, I am my neighbor's Bible. He reads me when we meet. Today he reads me in my home, tomorrow in the street. He may be relative or friend, or slight acquaintance be. He may not even know my name, yet he's reading me. Amen. Does it mean that we need to live a life that the unchurched, the unchristian, can see that there is something different about us? That they may want to become inquisitive, wanting to know, what is it that makes you so different? What make you so calm, irrespective of the turmoil that is going around? Why is it when everybody else is pulling out their hair, you, still, you seem to still be able to wear a smile? What is it? It is time that we be willing to share the love of God, what he means to us, what it means to be a child of God, what has he done for us? so that we can be our neighbor's Bible. In society today, there is a lack of true spirituality in the hearts of most of the population today. For the majority, it is living for the present. In addition, many, were in, many are engaging in practices and patterns of life not approved by God. As happens when, genu when genuine spirituality is lost, form takes the place of substance. Did we hear that? Mm -hmm. Form takes the place of substance. Mm -hmm. Maintaining the tradition becomes the rule. By going to church, once a week or attending or the festivals or the special occasions, as we come along, it feels that you 
and I are fulfilling our spiritual duty. When Jesus told the rich young ruler what he what to do in the first part, he was both he was happy to say, I've done this, been there, done it. I've been doing it since my childhood. For us today, our condition, our tradition becomes the rule. Has, has the form taken the place of substance? When Jesus was on earth, he called 12 followers. He called disciples. The Lord called these 12 not because he saw perfection, Among them were the volatile James and John, nicknamed Sons of Thunder. Among them was a quick-spoken Peter, so often afflicted with a foot-in-mouth disease. So many of us can identify with Peter. Among them was the covetous Judas. Jesus chose them not because they had reached the ideal, but because he saw what they might become in him. There is hope for you and me today. Jesus has chosen you, he has chosen me, not because we are perfect, but because we have potential. Don't let the things of the past hold you back. Let us be willing to confess our sins to God. For he says he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus is willing to rescue you, to rescue us from our sins, not in our sins. He wants to take us safely to his kingdom, where we will be free from heartaches and pain where we will be transferred from darkness into light, from slavery into freedom, from guilt into forgiveness, and from the power of Satan to the power of God. We have been rescued from the rebel kingdom to serve the rightful king. Therefore, we are no prince and princesses. I close with verse 14 of Philippians 3, which says, I press forward, I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Are we willing to make the necessary sacrifice, knowing that God is able to work in us, for us, and through us, that we become the instrument in his hand that he wants to accomplish his task on this earth. To reach the unreached, to reach the unchurched, and for those who don't know about him. Are we willing to make that sacrifice? Are we willing to be used by God in whatever he so chooses? The one thing that we need to hold on to is that we may just forget what we have done in the past. Ask God for his forgiveness and let us press towards the mark of the, high, of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
that we can be called prince and princesses and that we can inherit the right kingdom. I pray, Jesus, that as we surrender our will and our lives to you, that you may give us the strength and the courage to face the challenges and the snares that the devil will throw at us, knowing that we can claim victory in you. I pray, Lord, that as we continue in this world amid the turmoil and the uncertainty, that we may look to you, who is the only and finisher of our faith. Dear Lord, as we're in the holy hours of your holy Sabbath day, I pray that we may guard our lips and that as we leave here today, that you may give us journey mercies to get home and that we may return later. Lord, I want to put Sister Vicky in your hands as she leaves for the Muslim days this week. I pray that you may give her journey mercies and that you may guide her while she's there. Thank you for all that you have done and is doing in our lives. For Christ's sake. Amen. 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 Amen
always throw open invitation to his work. If you're willing and you think that God is leading you to be part of that meeting, it's going to be 6 p.m. Um, today. So make sure you are here for all the elders and those that have spoken. For those who are willing to support the church plan, it's 3 30 and we're going to meet in um, Sister Barbara's home. And the, what they're doing is to go house to house around where we're going to have our campaign and speak to people. They have a survey already they, have, they are trying to do to know the needs of those communities. So that our message and things we're going to present to them will really include those needs. So that is what they're trying to do this afternoon and it's going to run three weeks or so. So if you can make it today, please, we we'll have to verify when they're doing it next. If you're willing, they requested that we should support them. So please, it is, um, I request if you don't know anything to contribute, please pray for this evangelism campaign. And may God bless you as you go home. Just a reminder that there's the Sabbath school lunch um, and AYS is at four o'clock. Um, if you'd like to come and join us for lunch, you're more than welcome. Sabbath school team teachers, please come and join us at the back. Um, as the platform party leaves, we'll sing, Oh, it takes to see the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever.